Many now are finally agreeing that this is how heart disease is caused. It's the consumption of grains, sugars via these small LDL particles that are again, very, very glycation prone. So let's say you eat something that's made of sugar or maybe amylopectin A that you find in wheats and grains. What'll happen is that you'll convert those into VLDLs in the liver. And in turn, that leads to the formation again of these really small LDL particles. It is these small LDL particles that are eight fold more prone to glycation than the larger normal sized LDL particles. In fact, they become oxidized. The literature talks about glyoxidized LDL particles. That means they're glycated LDL particles that are also oxidized. And that's the actual cause for coronary disease leading to heart attack or sudden cardiac death. What you're saying is the people like Peter Atia who are trying to drill down and get this particle distribution on the LDL and find your APOB or whatever that subset is, they might be onto something if you are the type of person who are prone to blood glucose spikes. The implication is if you are not the type of person prone to blood glucose spikes, then forget about your LDL fine particle fraction. If your mm. cholesterol is high because you're ketogenic, you are not the type of person who is insulin resistant. You are not the type of person who is going to glycate those small LDL particles and your LDL particle account in your case might be irrelevant. Absolutely. You, this makes a ton of sense. It would be the combination that is, the glycation that really weaponizes LDL against your cardiovascular health. That's exactly right. And, that, and that's why LDL cholesterol is so antiquated and just not reliable.